Okay, I've laid out the tracks, and what I suggest you do is that you uh, measure them out from the start before you start cutting. This is going to be the, the biggest part of the track. This is going to be basically the grip. A smaller piece is going to lay on top of this. I measure out more than enough all at once, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these loose and glue them to this while this is still put together. That makes it more uniform and it's easier to do. All of this can be done pretty simply if it's done uniformly. Okay, these are laid out. Here's the best way to cut mass amount of pieces off. Again, something else I just figured out from doing this kind of stuff. Don't cut it all the way to the top. Do those. Let's see. I want to get a hold of it. It's been a while since I've done this. See how much simpler that is? Since I've been doing this for about two years of just scratch building out of cardboard, I've already figured out a lot of great ways to do some of the tedious stuff. You can save a lot of time and not get tired of your project. Okay, I use Elmer's clear glue for this because I need this to be pliable and not to dry super quick. I pour a little dab well, a healthy dab, on a piece of cardboard. Then I use tweezers. Then I just touch it lightly. And these are so big I can center them visually instead of measuring them out. Too much glue there. If you put one down and there's too much glue on it, just pick it up, move it to the spot next to it. Take the next piece of track and put no glue on it, and that will absorb that. And see, since this is Elmer's glue, I can still move things. Oh, that didn't go well. Okay, let's put that one aside. So just a little dab. And I do all the tracks before I cut them off of here, like this makes everything easier so I can keep them centered, spaced properly, and then it's easier to cut loose. Okay, I've glued them all on here. Looks like a giant chocolate bar. Since this is foam board that I use for the, the large part of the track, can't cut it with shears, and it'll look like hell, so it's got to be done by hand. So it's tedious, and I hate it. But it's the, currently the best way I know how to do it since I don't use power tools. I think I need to get a new blade. And what you do too with these is sand them. So, like this, only, I don't know, probably 160 times more. About half the tracks are done. Well, one side. Just want to show you what they look like before they go on. They're, they move like a watch band. And what that's going to give me is sag. When I'm completed with this, I'm going to glue them into place. But that gives me the sag and the realism um, to make this a better vehicle. How that works is I take them, I line them up, I take Elmer's glue. And I glue them to just typing paper. I can't swear this is the way I'll always do these tracks, but it's what I'm doing for this one. 
Okay, here's one side with the tracks on. They're, they're coming back off. They're not glued in place yet. There's no way I put the tracks on before uh, this is painted. And, and the tracks can be painted separately and weathered separately. But uh, you get a feel for the sag and the tracks. And, and they're, weirdly, they're working tracks. Actually, the wheels roll too, all of them, for now. They're not going to stay rolling. Um, this is the first tracks I've done that, well, besides the Mega Hiss, because I actually used this foam board on the Mega Hiss because <laughs> I needed something of substance. But uh, it's good. Um, I don't I don't know that I love foam board, but it's good for this for now. I'm sure I'll find something better later. But uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.